1430 WEEF Highland Park, Northbrook, Chicago. Again, I, I'm very pro Medicare. I think Medicare is a decently run program. Now, our, our, uh, our Congress and our administration uh, just passed a bill saying there's a half a billion dollars or 500, whatever it was, billion, $5 billion a year in Medicare waste. Um, again, I, I've had conversations all week with people. Medicare, I don't know one senior citizen that has ever called my office, and I've been doing this for a long time, that said Medicare stinks. I don't like Medicare. Every, every senior that's on it. Now, what happens in the back rooms with different things like we talk about? Um, all the statistics I've, I have ever read about Medicare, Medicare is running very efficiently. Rush Limbaugh, I heard him a couple weeks ago screaming and yelling about it. I know everybody says there's waste and fraud, but when I sit there and I hear for every dollar we spend in Medicare, 4% of it goes for administration as compared to the private sector, which is 25 to 35%. Then I say to you, why is that wasteful? I mean, now, post office, I'm not even going to touch that one because <laughs> we, we all know how that goes. And they, they claim they got wiped out by faxes and emails. But going back to our subject that we want to stay on as far as yes, the, the value added. The only thing that I, that I want to say a little bit again off the subject is I live in a district out in Fremd and in Schaumburg in that area there in District 51 or 15, I think it is. I get the Lexus sometimes. Um, they came to us a few years ago and said they're going to cancel all the sports programs and they wanted to add some value or not value they wanted to add real estate tax they wanted to jack up our real estate tax overwhelmingly the citizens said hey this is for education and there was it was all it was public hearings it was all brought out hey we're running as efficiently as we can run we've done this we've done that and overwhelmingly they did that if this is going to bring down the deficit, and this is something that I'm going to actually pay an extra 1% or 2% uh, on things that, that are uh, discretionary or optional things to buy, and it's going to wipe out the deficit, then I think it's a good thing. But again, I don't, I don't understand it as much. It sounds to me like we put ourselves in this big, deep hole that we didn't have to put ourselves in the last couple of years, and now to bail ourselves out, we're going to put it back on the taxpayers. You know, the the government runs like a uh, the opposite of a business. A business sits down and says, "Here are our revenues, and now we've got to make we've got to bring our expenses in line with our revenues. And if not, we have to increase revenues by increasing sales." Where the government instead always says, "This is what we want to provide. Now, how do we? How much money do we need to do it? Oh, okay. Well, we'll just reach into the pockets of the people and get it. But they don't really provide us anything more than we already have." Uh, it's it's a backwards way of running things. What, so are, it, what are the options? It, you know, it's sort of like, and I'm glad we have a video. It's sort of like when my wife balances uh, her checkbook. Have uh, you ever seen my wife balance her checkbook? She goes like this. She's not watching this. She just balances it like that. Never actually does the math to see if there's money in there. And no, she doesn't like to watch. She gets bored by my. She hears enough of this at home. She doesn't need to, to get on the radio or look on the, on the uh, internet. But, but no, how is the government? But how's the government supposed to raise money? Are they supposed well, to say we've been fat and we've been running uh, in, in deficits for the last three years and now we're going to cut services? Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea to me. I, I, I like that plan a lot. Well, the school districts did that. Well, for a while, and, they, and, they and, laid 1,400 people. And, and once again, I didn't, I didn't argue with the, the, the mothers because uh, at that party I was at a week or so ago, but I will tell you that I have absolutely no problem with them cutting that. You know what? So that means some of the parents. In the school district? Yeah, absolutely not. Oh, so you know what? So you know what? The parents they need to to get together. They need aides in the classes. Have the parents go out yeah, there and you volunteer. Know. Yeah. No. But you know what? You know. You know. And I have a problem with that because what about the kids? They're keeping the sports programs. They're keeping the football, the the hockey, all these other expensive programs. And what are they cutting? They're Cut cutting those the two hobbies. then. Cut those two. They're not doing to. it though. They're not doing it. They're, what they're doing is the kids that aren't able to physically make. These programs. I thought you were looking at me for something. Oh, okay. They didn't even ask for money after next year. After they did. Can he? We can't hear him. Can you hear? Chuck, jump on in there. You had something to say. They actually asked for more money after they did the bailout or whatever it was. I don't know what it's called. But um, I remember. About right, that sports program for yeah, years. Yeah, I remember in high ago? school. They they asked for it. They I think didn't they get it passed or they didn't get it passed. I don't know what they did. But the next year, they asked for more money yeah. anyway. And they, they changed everything, but they still wanted more money beyond what they did. And I really didn't see much of a difference. At, at what point does it stop? 
But you know, when the kids are not involved in programs, whether it be coin collecting or music or band, you know where they're at? They're out on the park benches. Do you remember the park benches? I, I, I do. Yeah. I do. And what and, did and we do there? We didn't study. No, and, and you know what? You know whose fault that was? That was not the educational system. That was our parents' fault. And I'm sorry if I just pissed off all the parents out there, but, you know, I, I, I've gone on record before. You know, my folks split up when I was 13. They both, oh lost, their, they both lost their minds and forgot they had kids, and we were allowed couch. to run wild. We get a couch. We could lay on a couch. So, you know what? Had the parents stayed involved, and it goes back to the point from last week, why do the, the private schools perform better than the public schools? Because the private school's parents are financially invested in it, and they follow up on their kids. Got more. It all starts at home, Tim. And, and last time I checked, I don't want the government raising my kids. I want to screw them up all it's by not myself. About raising the kids, it's about having programs that these kids could, could go out and play. When we were kids, we went out and we played baseball. In fact, I was I had dinner with my mother last night. We were talking about the yeah, channel two five seven nine eleven. I think was around and channel thirty two. Not that we're that old. You didn't have cable. You didn't have Wi Fi or those. What is that game that they call now? Wow. Well, I don't know what the. Kids went out and they played stickball. They played different things. Right. There isn't any of that anymore. There isn't any of that kind of stuff. You know, we're 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 actually putting our kids back out on the street. That's how I look at it. Uh, Tim, do you even think this is much of a threat, though? I mean, it, it's like an an outball threat that they state, but they don't actually mean anything by it. I mean, because like, because if they got rid of their sports and their you know their extracurricular activities, kids wouldn't be as interested in school and they might not even show up. I mean, like, I knew kids in high school. My brother was a swimmer, a swimmer for, for right. God. He, he's a college swimmer now. But he, you know, he played every day. He swam to his fullest. He actually came to school more than any other kid because he would be there six hours before and six hours he's after. He was passionate. Yeah. yeah he's I know passionate about thousands of kids that are like that, that that motivated them through schooling. And if they took away all their, their activities, i, I got to say, like, 2% of the, the, of the school would show up because – I really doubt that they're actually, I, I think it's just an outmost threat. And I, I, I wait, a minute, wait a minute, if only 2% of, of the kids would show up, then there's some serious bad parenting going on. I don't some know. Some serious bad, and Stephanie, okay. jump in, Steph, because Steph, actually I think I finally, after weeks and weeks, have made a point Stephanie agrees with. <sighs> I'm proud of myself. I think there should be a test for you to have a kid. If you don't pass the test, I guess you're not having a kid. Well, that's just how I'm thinking. Uh, Sorry. Would it be uh, like uh, all mental, or would it be like physical too? <laughs> like, because I mean, like, hey, it's hard to, hey, smart, it's, but they have no idea what to do. In it, I, I have. I don't think it's about money. I think it's just about whether you think you want to be involved with your kids' life. That's it. And, and I guess maybe, maybe you know, once again, I'm slanted by my own views. I'm one of those like parents that you, you was overly, here, overly actually. involved Stop with my it. children, where they were probably like, oh my God, my dad's here again. You know sort of thing. But, you know, that's why I always get back to it. It gets back to education is going to be as important as the parents make it at home. I don't care how much money you throw at it. I don't care how much more in taxes you throw at something. If the parents are involved, it'll be important to the kids. If they're not, it's not going to be. It's just well, not going to yeah, happen. Well, we, well, we've gotten off of this, though. The fact is that when they have to cut, why do they have to go and cut these programs? What about the kid that can't be a swimmer? What about the kid that wants to be in band or the kid that wants to be in, in a, a speech class or he wants to be in something that physically he can't, he or she can't be in? Or even those mandatory days of the year where, where you, you know, the, the kids don't have school. They're still having school, but they're not there. Well, we're, well I mean, the, I, thing, the thing is, is that when you, again, and I'm one of these people that says the government keeps moving the line. You start mm -hmm. cutting these programs, and what next are you going to cut? Maybe, maybe you should put a cap on the teacher's pay, or maybe you should put a cap on the retirement plans.